Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health center, <laughs> any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy. I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. We welcome your calls at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, longevity business, a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, a frustrating health challenge you have no answers for, the doctors aren't going to give you any answers. There's no answers really from a medical standpoint for chronic degenerative disease, but there's lots of answers when we understand how to leverage the built-in healing properties of the body and it all starts off with a good nutritional supplement program like the one designed by doc and all the formulators at longevity you can call 866-735-2470 866-735-2470 if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended or you can purchase them right off the website's brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com or call 866-735-2470 and tell me you want to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start yourself a longevity business, earn thank you checks associated with having your own business, work out of your home office, work out of your home, right off your right off your home office, right off your mileage, right off your uh, your stamps. It's you get the tax benefits and the entrepreneur benefits and work your own hours, make as much or as little money as you want, and all at, the, all at the same time as you're helping change the world at the most fundamental level. The most fundamental level, of course, is the level of physical health and well-being. Nothing else matters if we are not physically healthy. Nothing else matters if we're not physically strong and vital. There's no ask anybody who's sick. Ask any wealthy person who's sick which is more important, wealth or health. Health transcends everything, and that's why nutritional supplementation can be such a fundamental, important component of a good lifestyle. 844-236-6010 is our number today, and we do have open lines. Oh, we have lines open for you. Please try to call in early at 844-236-6010, and we'll take your calls at the bottom of the hour, as we always do on the bright side. All right, so we're talking about the idea of stress and hormesis, as it's technically called, H-O-R-M-E-S-I-S, -E -S. stress being a good thing, trauma, control trauma actually being a good thing, stress makes us better, challenging, challenging ourselves makes us better, challenging ourselves intermittently with intermittent fasting, for example, is a tried and true mechanism for healing the body. Intermittent fasting helps uh, improve visual, uh, uh, vision and brain function. Endurance running can be helpful. Uh, endurance running, uh, pr intermittent endurance running can not only support muscle strength and heart health, but also it can help improve brain function. When we eat plants, when we eat vegetation, there's actually toxins in the vegetation that make us stronger, make us more resilient, make us more able to handle uh, other toxins. They stimulate our liver to produce antitoxins. The toxins in plants, the noxious compounds in plants, and plants produce lots of these compounds, lots and lots 
For you vegetarians and vegans out there, I hate to break the news to you, but in many ways, meat is better food than plants are. I know that that's kind of that sort of uh, counterintuitive and and is the opposite of what we're conditioned to believe. But in many ways, eating meat is better for you if you just ate meat than eating vegetables. Now, I know I'm exaggerating a little bit because meat these days is definitely problematic. And also, there's wonderful things in veggies. You don't want to be eating uh, just meat. And also, the toxic compounds in vegetables can actually be beneficial in this hormetic, hormesis kind of way. They stimulate our livers to make anti-cancer compounds, anti-aging compounds, disease-fighting compounds. And this is really one of the major reasons why vegetables are such powerful medicine. It's not the veg. I, I'm kind of just being a little bit... Ex I'm exaggerating a little bit when I say vegetables are poisonous. Yeah, they're poisonous, but it's really like they're medicinal. Vegetables are medicine. Plant is medicine. When it comes to the skin, when it comes to skin health, there's lots you could do also to leverage the power of stress, leverage the power of controlled wounding, leverage the power of burden, leverage the power of challenging. You can do it, uh, you can do it with uh, a washcloth. If you go to a salon or an esthetician, they'll do it with something called microderm abrasion, where they shoot little crystals at the skin. doesn't seem like that would be great to shoot little crystals at the skin, but the net result can be healthier, stronger skin in this hormesis kind of fashion. Personally, I like using low pH substances, acidic substances on the skin. Of course, you don't want to use too much acid. You don't want something too acidic. But just the right amount of, of acidity, just the right amount of stimulation can help turn on all the mechanisms of anti-aging. Remember, pH is a measurement of how acid or non-acid a substance is. It goes from, it's measured on a scale that goes from 0 to 14. The pH scale starts at 0, it ends at 14, 0 being the most acidic, 14 being the most non-acidic or alkaline as they say or base sometimes I'll say. So you've got an acid base scale that runs from zero to 14, acid alkaline scale that runs from zero to 14. Water is considered neutral at seven. Zero is the most acidic, 14 is the most alkaline. The skin is slightly acidic. The skin is somewhere between maybe four-ish and uh, Five, somewhere in there, four to four, four point five. It's, it's it's moving up and down, and there are mechanisms in the skin to keep it slightly acidic. They call it the acid mantle. The acid mantle. You may have heard that term. The acid mantle is a coating of acid that lives on the skin, specifically fatty acids that live on the skin. And these fatty acids keep the pH of the skin around mm, four-ish, we'll say. But if you can drop the pH to say three or even two. You can turn on the cells. You can turn on cell growth. You can turn on connective tissue growth. You can turn on blood supply. You can make the skin healthier by dropping the pH periodically on the skin. It's like, I think of a, just a, you don't, you don't want to be too acidic, but just the right amount of acid is like a tickle. It like tickles the cells. And this tickling has a hormesis effect. Hormesis is the concept that small amounts of stress are beneficial when cells are stressed just so, just a tiny little bit tickled, not hurt, not damaged, not broken down, but just tickled. They release chemicals called cytokines. These chemicals, these cytokines say, hey, we need some support. They send messages down to the dermis and mess messages down to the lower epidermis. Even actually, kill, even actually killing the cells. You know, if you kill some cells, that will also have that stimulatory effect. You don't necessarily need to kill the cells. You don't, you can just do, you can just tickle them. But even if you were to kill the cells, again, that wouldn't necessarily cause too much of a problem on the skin because the skin is so used to growing and moving and, and this transit time is always occurring. So tickling, damaging, controlled wounding, stimulate cytokines, these little chemicals that are, 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 are act as, as messengers that say, hey, the shingles are missing off the roof and turns everything on. Cytokines, by the way, are worth a lot of drugs work. A lot of drugs destroy cytokines. This is, this is the brilliant medical model that we live with. Destroying the cytokines supposedly shuts down inflammation. Of course, it also shuts down growth, if you understand this whole mechanism. All right, I'm Pharmacist Benny. 442366010 is our number. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. Okay, we're back. 
back on the bright side. I'm Farm Spanny for 4236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about skin health or, or truth treatment products, which are all available at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. If you have a comment or success story you'd like to share, 844 844- 236 6010 is our number on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben, and we're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time and 24 7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com and also benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that one up. You can also buy, uh, purchase all your longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. So the skin's got a pH of hmm, maybe four-ish, slightly acid, they say, and it has to stay slightly acid. Acid is movement. Acid represents movement, alkali, movement outward, I should say, like a fountain. I like to think of acid like a fountain, and I like to think of alkaline like a vacuum. A fountain spews out energy, and a vacuum sucks it up. Alkaline sucks it up. The skin has to be slightly acidic because it's constantly pushing out enemies, bacterial enemies, pathogens, various, you know, the skin's in a battle with the environment. There's all kinds of attacks upon the skin as we walk around in our environment and the skin has evolved to be acidic to kind of push those invaders away and it needs to be acidic to be healthy. When our skin is sick, when we have psoriasis or eczema, the pH rises. We become more alkaline. Oh, by the way, most skincare products are alkaline. Most skincare products will, ri- will, will pull the pH of the skin upwards, away from its healthy levels. Now, of course, the skin is uh, very, very efficient at pulling the pH back down, but over and over and over and over again, over the course of days and weeks and months and decades and lifetimes, it, it, It's not going to do your skin any good to apply most lotions that are alkaline on top of the skin. Soap, by the way, is highly alkaline, which is one of the reasons why you don't want to wash your face with soap. And there's a difference between soap and a cleanser. Not all cleansers are soaps. Soaps are the kind of things that come in a bar for the most part. Sometimes they'll be liquid, but for the most part, they're bars. And these bars, ivory soap, for example, has got a pH of maybe 10 to 11. That's way, way off the pH of the skin. Remember, every pH point is 10 times. So a pH of 6 is 10 times uh, 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 more alkaline than a pH of 5. A pH of 7 is 100 times more alkaline than a pH of 5. A pH of 8 is 1,000 times more alkaline than a pH of 5. A pH of 9, 10,000 times. A pH of 10, 100,000 times. So we're talking about 10 to 100,000 times higher pH or, or more alkaline than the skin wants to be when you use soap. Other lotions, typical lotions around 7 or 8, sometimes 9. You want to be acidic on the skin. Now, you don't necessarily need to be overly acidic, but you, if you're going to put skincare products on, they should be, in, the, in my opinion, between the 5-ish point, somewhere around 4 or 5. If you want to stimulate the skin, now you really want to be acidic. Now you want to be in the level of 3. So if you're using something like glycolic acid or even acetic acid from vinegar or red wine, and you really want to maximize the stimulating benefits, you want to make sure that it's acidic. Then you want to make sure that it's got an acidic pH. Apple cider vinegar, of course, has an acidic pH. That's why we drink it, to stimulate our stomach acid. Lemon juice has an acidic pH. Most alpha hydroxy acids, unless they've been manipulated, will be acidic enough. They're obviously acids, but they'll be acidic enough that they can make a difference on your skin that they will stimulate or tickle the nerve cell or tickle the skin cells tickle them to release cytokines milking them it's kind of like milking them the, the the low level of ph acts as a stimulus the way milking an udder causes milk to be secreted the uh, the skin cells will milk will pump out cytokines and these cytokines are growth inducing and pro inflammatory both they're pro inflammatory they cause inflammation these cytokines but they also induce growth are you surprised well yes as it turns out inflammation turns on growth and anti inflammation turns off growth and this is one of the major problems with using prednisone as a drug it turns off growth and repair because yes sure it shuts down inflammation you know, you can get a cortisol shot in your shoulder, have shoulder pain, and it'll turn off the inflammation and your shoulder won't hurt anymore. If you're an NFL football player or an athlete, professional athlete, that might be a good thing. But if you're a little old lady, that's a very bad thing. Even if you're a young, a little young lady or a young man or anybody, 
Yes, it'll turn off the pain, shut down the pain by turning off the inflammation, but it will also keep the shoulder from healing. It'll keep the shoulder from repairing in the same way that when you use a moisturizer, which I hate that word, but you know, we've talked about this. When you use a moisturizer, you shut your skin down from the, the skin stops making its, uh, its natural moisture factors. The same way when you inject cortisol into your skin in the name of instant relief, which I'm not saying, you know, sometimes you want instant relief, that's for sure. But just know that the more cortisone you use, the more prednisone you use, the more shots you get, the more steroids you take, the more non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, which work the same way, like Motrin and Naproxen, the more biologic drugs you use, which shoot down the inflammatory process, the less growth and repair you're going to get. I, I don't know how, how this became okay. Okay, maybe in the short term. I don't want to be on record as being against pain relief in the short term because I've been in pain, and when you're in pain, you just want relief, and I understand this. But in the long run, to use pain, uh, uh, anti-inflammatory kinds of medicines to reduce pain is going to turn off healing, and we really need to understand this. Inflammation is part of the healing process. Anti-inflammation can turn off the healing process. And this accounts for the damaging effects of long-term exposure to, to uh, prednisone and cortisone, as well as naproxen, as well as uh, 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 feldine and val Volterin and whatever, uh, whatever all the latest non uh, anti-inflammatory prescription medicines you can get, including the biologics. You know what? Even Motrin probably does the same thing. Even non-prescription anti-inflammatories will do the same thing because healing is tied into inflammation. The good news is, is we can leverage this. We can take advantage of this by actually intentionally inflaming, intentionally putting inflammatory substances on the skin. Acid substances will do it. Abs as I say, acid substance substances have a cytokine pumping effect, milking effect. Tur they turn on growth and repair. They turn on the fibers of beauty. Nature is actually filled with these mildly acidic substances. And the skin itself contains alpha hydroxy acids. This is why I love alpha hydroxy acids so much. They're already in the skin. So yeah, you put them on top of your skin uh, from lemon juice or some, something you bought at the, at the uh, drugstore or department store, like a glycolic acid. You're not going to get very acidic stuff at a, like, at a department store or drugstore. I personally, for, with the truth, we're going to have a lot of acidic substances coming out that you can use topically in your skin to get, take advantage of this hormesis effect on the skin. Meantime, use some lemon juice or, or vinegar. There are, these these su substances are found throughout nature, and they're found in the skin. They're especially found in uh, sugar, in sweet kinds of things, like fruits. They're not really found in vegetables as much. There's some in vegetables, for sure, but not in uh, as much as in fruits. Why? Because these alpha-hydroxy acids are part of sugar metabolism. And that's why, by the way, the sugar cane and the sugar beet are two of nature's richest sources of alpha-hydroxy acids. Anything that has lots of sugar in it is going to have, or is working with sugar or utilizing sugar, is going to have alpha-hydroxy acids and that's why they're found in fruits so much fruit that's why they're called fruit acids actually all right eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number i'm pharmacist ben you are listening to the bright side we'll take a commercial break and come back with more good health information and your phone calls right after this eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number we'll, we'll be back right after this Right side. I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or business or formulations or ingredients or skin health or our truth treatment products or you have a success story you'd like to share, any uh, just want to contribute to the conversation. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side, and we'll get your calls here momentarily. So hang on if you're on hold. From... Uh, Let's see here. This is from the journal Science News, online journal Science News, which I love, by the way. Uh, new study links our gut bacteria with our cholesterol and body fat levels. This is so important, so underappreciated, this link between how we process fat and good bacteria in the gut. If you're dealing with any kind of hormonal problem, female hormonal problem, like estrogen problems, endometriosis, autoimmune diseases, inflammatory diseases, more than likely, you're having a problem with how your gut bacteria process fat and process hormones. 
processing fat and processing hormones are, are require the same kind of biochemistry and probiotics are the missing link. If you have any kind of female health issues, if you have fat malabsorption issues, probiotics are incredibly important. From uh, UPI, Health Day News, actually, probiotics and diet appear to help control blood sugar, scientists say. So now you got a link between probiotics and blood sugar. That's the link between the first point of uh, the triangle of disease and the second. The probiotics represent that connection. In fact, I call it the triangle of disease, these three points of bodily breakdown that are behind all chronic degenerative disease, the, the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the adrenal thyroid complex. But it's really a line of disease because the two fundamental points are the blood sugar system and the digestive system, and they are related at the level of the intestine via probiotics. Yeah, there's a third point because the adrenals are involved and the thyroid is involved as well behind all chronic degenerative diseases. But this third point is itself secondary to the first line, the first two points, which are digestion and blood sugar. And the missing, the, the connection between the digestive system and the blood sugar is in the gut, in the intestine, it, the probiotics. So the good bacteria are the, they're the pre-point. They're the, the very essence of good health. Yeah, the, the dige I talk about the digestive system and the blood sugar system for sure, but the core of the digestive system is the probiotics, the good bacteria, and keeping the intestine hospitable to good bacteria is unspeakably important. It's not just taking probiotics, by the way. I like the nightly essence. Nightly essence has digestive enzymes in it, but it's not just taking probiotics. And you know what else? Sometimes you have to play around with the brands of probiotics. You also have to keep the intestine hospitable for the bacteria, and that requires nitrogen from vegetables. That's why vegetables are so important. It requires fiber from vegetables, another reason why vegetables are so important, and it requires the right stomach pH. Yes, there's a relationship between stomach pH, stomach acidity, and good bacteria. If we're, we're not producing enough stomach acid, that's going to affect the bacteria. If we're not processing our food correctly at the digestive enzyme level, so making sure you're using digestive enzymes, your ultimate enzymes, as well as apple cider vinegar, those are also important for making the intestine conducive to probiotics. So it's not just taking a probiotic supplement. And that's why a lot of folks will take a probiotic supplement and not get maximum benefit. Most people will get some benefit from a probiotic supplement, no matter what it is, but you won't get maximum benefit unless you work on all the levels of, the, of digestive health because they all have an impact. They all play a role in how well uh, or how hospitable the uh, intestine will be for the probiotics, for the bacteria. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's uh, say good morning to Derek in Texas. What's up, Derek? Welcome to The Bright Side. Hey, uh, Pharmacist Duke. Um, just want to tell you that we love your show, but um, we have a friend named Roger, and he lives in Iowa, and he's 70 years old, and he okay. just had open-heart surgery eight months ago, and okay. now he's having dizzy spells, and he's passing out, and he just went to the hospital for five days, and they don't know what's wrong with him. Well, yes, they do. They're not that dumb. Or maybe they are. When you have well, open heart surgery, I don't think they're that dumb. they got to know. When you have heart surgery, open-heart surgery, your, blood, your brain loses blood. You, they basically take your heart out and, and pump your, your blood through a machine. So your brain is very susceptible to damage after heart surgery. Very. So they certainly know this. That's not something they don't know. They're not telling you. you know, but that's almost, almost certainly is involved. But there could also be cortisol that's involved, stress hormone that's involved. That's a very stressful thing for the body. You know, when we go into surgery, the body doesn't know that we're in an operating room in the year 2018. It thinks we're in the African savanna being eaten by a lion 20, 30,000 years ago, 40,000, 50,000 years ago. You, you know what I'm saying? So it activates yeah. every single stress chemical you can imagine. It, it's a major stress on the body. So that might be involved as well. What you got to do is you got to build this guy back up again. He's got it. You got to okay. treat him like he's Arnold Schwarzenegger or you know who that is. I don't know if you know who that is, but yes. he was yes, a, sir, a I do. okay. So uh, he, like you're a bodybuilder. That's how you got to treat yourself when it comes to recovering from any kind of surgery, but especially something as dramatic as heart surgery. So it's, you know, we all need a supplement program. We all need to lower our sugar. We all need to watch our diet, how we eat, and, and, and work at the multiple levels of healing, spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical. This guy's got to do it with 100 times more vigilance. He's got to do everything you have to do. You sound like you're a young guy, Derek, right? Probably in your 20s. Yes, sir, I'm 18. 
18, all right? So guess what? You have to do it too, but you don't have to do it as, with as much conscientiousness as he does. As you get older and as you get more frail and fragile, and if you're coming through surgery or any kind of, any kind of a, a physical trauma of some kind, it becomes extra important that you get on the Healthy Start Pack, you get on bone broth protein, you start doing bone broth. These are all for your friend, Derek. You do bone broth all day long, make chicken soup, and that you live on it. Live on chicken soup and vegetable juice and essential fatty acids. I don't mean live on it, but that should be the bulk of what he's eating. Uh, also, uh, the things he doesn't want to do and things he or eat any sugar. He should have zero Zippo tolerance for anything that's refined sugar. Sugar's everywhere. You can't like eliminate it, but but refined sugar, processed food. The less he eats, the better off he's going to be. The quicker he can get on an exercise program, the better off he can be. Even if it's just jumping up and down on a rebounder, if he really doesn't feel well. Uh, for the dizziness, I would be uh, doing a couple things. That sounds. We're gonna. I'm gonna assume that that has something to do with the stress and the adrenal. Glands, so uh, have him practicing SDR breathing, the slow, deep rhythmic breathing. Have him uh, um, using the B complex, but especially vitamin B5, maybe a couple grams a day, very important for the adrenal glands. Vitamin C, extra, you'll get some in the, in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, but extra, very important for the adrenal glands. The adrenals have more vitamin C. If you want to know how important vitamin C is for stress, the adrenals have more vitamin C, like five times more vitamin C than any other organ in the body. They concentrate. They, they concentrate vitamin C, so very important for any kind of stress. Uh, also, uh, 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 zinc is also important for the adrenal glands. I, I'd be having. I'd have him do a couple, at least a couple eggs a day, two, three eggs a day, if he can handle eggs. That is, as well as bone okay. broth and bone broth protein, both bone broth and bone broth bone broth protein. All right, I want to get a few more calls, and there's tons more you could do. Get the book, The Sinatra Solution. Uh, he talks about magnesium and coenzyme Q10, which are also very, very important for the heart. There's tons more you can do, but that'll, that'll, that's a good start. And get the book, The Sinatra Solution. Thanks, Derek. Appreciate yes, your call, man. Thanks for the kind words, too. Let's see what Cliff, or let's see what, uh, let's go to Elaine first. Elaine's been holding on a while. What's up, Elaine? Hey, good morning, Dan. How are hey, you? I'm doing good. What's going on? Oh, just uh, a question, but I hear the music come you, up. Real quick, what's your question? Uh, I've got a client. Her husband has prostate cancer. Oh, okay. All right. We'll deal with that when we come back from our break. Hang on, Elaine. And if you're on hold, hang tight, too. We'll try to get to everybody if we can. 8, uh, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back after this. Uh, talking to Elaine in Alaska. Hey, Elaine. So you got a friend with prostate cancer. Yeah, you know, and he is, he's pretty good about doing longevity and doing his BTT, but then he'll, like, fall off the bandwagon and start drinking, like, Dr. Pepper. And <laughs> well, well, you know, I mean, I don't want to judge anybody. I, anybody can get cancer, so we do what we do. Uh, how far along is he? Do you know? Just very recently diagnosed. And okay, good. Know? Early, you know, people but... people on autopsy, they'll find people, they, they die when they're 90, 95, they're perfectly fine, and they on autopsy, they'll, they'll find they have prostate cancer, or, or other cancers for that matter, too. So cancer is not like a death sentence. Uh, we got to rethink our ideas about cancer. They're antiquated, and they're, and they're really based a lot in economics and finances, unfortunately, because it's the most, you know, obviously, it's a tragic thing. Uh, people, cancers come and go. Do you know this, Elaine? Cancers come and go. To, uh, right. Cancer cells come and go. They appear and disappear. Cancers disappear spontaneously. People don't. They, they call them. They call them uh, spontaneous remissions. But it, it's not. Doesn't have to be a death sentence. However, it is. A, it is a sign that the body is under duress, and that's what you really want to uh, want to address, especially for this guy because it hasn't progressed. So uh, he needs to understand that his body's under duress, and that's he's paying the price for that. So I'm not going to judge anybody for Dr. Pepper or, or Snickers bars or whatever you eat or drink. But there's an impact. There's a role. Meantime, nutritional supplementation can, can help them out a lot. Think fats, fatty vitamins, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin A, also probably vitamin K, probiotics, which we just talked about are important for fat metabolism, fat minerals like zinc and selenium. I know that sounds kind of weird, fat minerals, but these are minerals that are processed by the fatty system of the body. The prostate depends a lot on fats. 
So, so you want to focus on that aspect of, of health, eliminating f- uh, fried fats, trans fats. There's a big major relationship between these kinds of ingestion of crappy fats and prostate disease. So eliminating those, get them on something called beta cytosterol or beta cetosterol, 300 milligrams a day or so. Get on the Prost FX, absolutely the healthy start pack. And I'd be taking extra EFAs, especially EFAs are very, very important for the, for the prostate, particularly omega-3s. So I'll focus on essential fats as well. And you know what? If you're, if he's gonna, he wants to do the Dr. Pepper. God love him. You know, do whatever you want to do. But just know that there is a that there's a relationship between the two. They're not separate. How we eat and how we drink and how we live our lives and how our body shows up for for better or worse. And how we think and how we emote and our spiritual connection as well. All right, Elaine. I'm gonna get a couple more calls in. Does that help? That helps me so much. And I just okay. want to say a plug. I love your show and I love listening when I'm doing my food prep and cooking because oh, nice. I can make better choices. Thank you. I appreciate that. Have a great day. Bye, Elaine. Bye. Okay, bye. Okay, let's move on to Cliff in California. Good morning, Cliff. What's up? Hey, thanks, Pharmacist, Pharmacist Ben, for taking my call. A um, couple questions. I've been listening to you about the skin the last this week, and uh, okay. I've had a terrible, terrible rash under my right arm. And I was doing some topical things, and then I switched after listening to you to kind of like doubling up on my probiotics, eating Did some sauerkraut, make a and difference. Topically applying, uh, and uh, topically applying apple cider vinegar, but and it has made a big difference. But I'm wondering if there's anything else I can be doing to get rid of this. Oh, hang on, though. Listen to you, Cliff. You're just like so blasé about it. It has made a big difference. Do you know how huge that is? Do you know if you didn't listen to this program, you would have been you would have been miserable, or you would have gone to a, a boneheaded dermatologist who would have given you a drug. <laughs> Do you understand how huge yep. that is? And you're like so blasé about it. You're like, oh, yeah, and made a huge difference. That Dude, that's revolutionary. <laughs> yeah. now, not for you or our, our listeners because you're used to hearing me say this, but for 99% of the people out there, that's revolutionary. If you go, if you go somewhere and tell people that now that you know it they'll, and, they, and, and you help people, they'll think you're a prophet. Do you understand how huge well, that you is? Are. you are. You well, are. Thank you. <laughs> But no, I'm, I'm talking about you. No, I'm not. It's, that's the point. It's like, it's so simple. It's not prophetic. It, it's just so simple, so logical. And so I'm so, I, I, I can't tell you how that makes me feel when I hear somebody like, you, when you say that, you actually proved it for yourself. That's huge. Huge, huge, huge. Now so, pay it forward and tell other so, folks. Yes, there's lots you could do. Yeah, so with- Okay. Lots you could do. Okay, you're, you obviously were experiencing some kind of digestive health issue, so you guys, start to, you guys start to look for foods. There's probably some foods that you're putting into your system that your body doesn't like, and it's reacting accordingly. So do, I, would do, I would fast for a day or two. You'll notice even more improvement when you fast, and then start doing the food diary and start isolating problem foods. Continue with the probiotics, but as I was saying earlier, it's not just the probiotics. You're going to need to eliminate the foods that are the problematic foods for you. And as I, was, I said this a couple days ago, you know, fructose or, or simple sugars can be a big problem. Things like uh, that are in asparagus, you know, even, so you may, it may be in veggies. You may think, oh, I'm just eating organic veggies all day. Well, it could be there too. So do a food diary and see if you can isolate problem foods. Make sure you're doing vegetable juices. Veggies you can do, of course. Uh, vegetable juices for the fiber, or you can grind up flax seeds and get fiber. You need to have fiber for the, pro, for the bacteria to really thrive. And then uh, drink some apple cider vinegar in addition to putting it on your skin. And then topical vitamin okay. C. Get some topical vitamin C. Go to truetreatments.com. Get, get our true serum. That's amazing for rashes. All right, Cliff, that, that's awesome. I'm, I'm highly impressed. Yes, what, were you going to say on something? That, on that same line, can you suggest some type of uh, homemade aftershave balm I've been using? Homemade oatmeal. Uh, if you want to homemade, get oatmeal. Grind up oatmeal, and you can either put okay. the oatmeal as a paste or you can make yourself a little uh, kind of lotion-y thing. You have to do it fresh with maybe a little bit of, of yogurt or something like that, something to di- or mayonnaise even, just to grind it up and kind of, and kind of pat it on your skin, that kind of thing. Oatmeal okay. is, really, okay. is probably the most soothing thing that you could put. Also, believe it or not, corn oil can be very soothing too for some unknown okay. reason. I don't, I don't know what's in the corn oil. All right, thanks so much, Cliff. Have a beautiful day, buddy. Thanks for sharing that too. I appreciate it. All right, let's get uh, Truth Raider in. Truth Raider, you pa- got the patience of Joe. That's Joe. awesome. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Let's, patience let's, is a virtue. Turn that patience radio off because I don't want to hear myself twice. I don't even want to hear myself once. Do you hear okay. me? Do you hear yes. yourself? No, Do turn you? your radio off, Truth Raider. I, I don't have a radio on. I don't know what, what, what radio in the background is going on. Oh, okay, it's I, better I now. I, I don't hear it. Oh, you hear it? Oh, you don't hear it? Okay, very good. 
Yep. Patience and precision is the old time religion. Two questions mm-hmm. for you, pharmacist Ben. Yes, sir. <laughs> Copper, the, the true benefits, is it a miracle cure or, or is that just, no. you know, both hype? Not a miracle and cure. Question, yeah. The other question is about the food supply, the meat. Oh, there's, oh there's, it's awful. There's it's human hideous. DNA, human yeah, DNA. Yeah, well, you're gonna, you want me to talk about that in the 90 seconds I have left? You know, it's hideous. Our food supply okay. is absolutely hideous, which is one of the major reasons why the less you eat, the longer you live. Even just eating right. quality food. You know, the less you eat, the longer you live because you reduce the load on the body. But, but especially in, in our 21st, uh, uh, with our 21st century food supply, the less you eat, the longer you live. And the far away, further away you stay away from processed foods, the better off you're going to be. Cereals and bars and things that come in boxes and, and package envelopes that you rip. And I don't care if it's got a f- picture of a farm on the cover either or on the, on the package. I don't care if it's got Bossy the Cow on the package. You know how all these processed foods will give you these nice farmy, farmy pictures. So you think you're back on the farm eating their processed egg, eating your eating your your uh, powdered eggs. It doesn't work that way. Stay away from processed food as best as you can. Stay away from food if you don't absolutely need it, and uh, uh, in, intermittently fast also is another great strategy. I want, I want to get one more call, and we could talk about copper tomorrow if you call me back. But I want to get one more call. Okay. Thanks, Truth Raider. Appreciate it, buddy. Let's uh, go to Amalfi. I'm I'm a Amalafi in New York. What's up? I'm Amalafi. I hope I said that right. Amalafi. Yes. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Ben. Good morning. How you uh, doing? I'm doing very well. Uh, I was calling to find out what did you recommend for um, problems with sleeping? Lots of things. Melatonin, probably the first thing I think about. Uh, CBD. You, you don't want to take it every day, though. Start off with three milligrams a night, but don't take it every day. Skip days. Mm-hmm. You don't want to get too used to it. CBD is another good one. That's more medicinal, of course. CBD, uh, you can get that at brightsidehealth.com. From a nutritional perspective, magnesium is very, very relaxing. Take some magnesium before you go to bed, some osteomag. And how many, how many milligrams? 1,000 milligrams before you go to bed. Sometimes people get a little gassy or bloated from magnesium. So see where you don't want that to happen, of course. So about 1,000 milligrams is a good place to start. Uh, you can mm-hmm. use something called tryptophan, T-R-Y, T-R-Y-P-T-O-P-H-A-N, tryptophan, or 5-H-T-P, okay. but tryptophan works a little bit better. You might also want to try GABA, G-A-B-A, maybe 100 to 200, even up to 500 milligrams a day. Uh, there's one more I was going to tell you about. Theanine is another one that you could use. Valerian root is another one you could use. Uh, there's one I'm skipping, one I'm forgetting, and I can't, I don't remember. Oh, lithium. Uh, lithium orotate. Yeah, yeah. Lithium orotate, maybe five milligrams a day. You might want to try some lithium orotate. And then so slow deep breathing. SDR breathing as you're falling into that. sleep. I'm is it helping? S- meditation. Meditation's yeah. beautiful. Uh, beautiful. Think about something spiritual or high, or think about your kids, or think about your puppy, or think about something nice and to calm you down before you go to bed. All right, I'm Alafi. We're out of time. Thank you for your call. I hope I helped you out. Have a beautiful Thank day. You. Thank you. And thank you to all my wonderful listeners. Appreciate all of you. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products, and truthtreatments.com for all, all our truth skin health products. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.